If you're already pretty good at drawing an ink pen, but you're looking to get to the next stage where people ooh and ah, then this probably is not the video for you. But if your drawings look anything like mine did about a month ago, and you're looking to level up your skills to something a little more mature and not as elementary, then keep watching. In the month of October, I joined the ink challenge known as Inktober, where you complete one drawing each day using any type of pen. Before Inktober began, I felt like my doodles were much too simple and rudimentary, but as the month went on, I discovered a few small ways to take my drawings up a notch. It's nothing new exactly, just an easier way to apply an already widely known technique. Let's assume this is not the first drawing video you've ever watched, and so you're likely already familiar with stippling, hatching, and cross-hatching. Well, I was also familiar with these techniques, but to be completely honest, I wasn't sure how to start applying them to my own art. So that being said, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to try each of these techniques and then immediately throw you into a project that's beyond your current skill level. Instead, we're going to start with a handful of the exact same drawings that we began with. You know, the basic doodles that we already know how to draw, the ones you scribble on a notepad when you're on hold. Now take a closer look at the mushrooms, the skull, the cactus, and the snail. I've done my best to recreate these four doodles on a separate piece of paper. In fact, I've copied them twice, but the second time around, I took an extra step. Doesn't that look a touch better, or at least more interesting? They're basically the same doodles, the ones we already know how to draw, but they've been taken up a notch. Now grab your pen and paper because it's time to work through a few pen sketches together. And when we're done, I'm going to challenge you to do the same thing with a few of your own doodles. I do own a variety pack of fine liners, but I quickly found that I prefer the smallest tip myself, the 005. So for today's exercise, I'm going to be using a 005 micron fine liner in black. The tip size is two millimeter, but use whatever you have available, preferably fairly small. I'll also be using a pencil with an eraser. Any type is fine. So remember that small shrub on the doodle page? Let's see if we can make this a bit more interesting. Let's start with the outline of a shrub. Nothing fancy. We'll add some grass and the hint of some earth underneath. Pretty boring, I know. So number one is pen lines only. I should have wrote lines, but I didn't. <laughs> number one is pen lines only. Let's do another. We're starting out exactly the same. But now that we have the outline done, we're going to use the stippling method in the most basic way. Decide on a starting point and work your way around the outline with small dots close to the already existing line. And as you move around the bush, think about which areas will receive the most light and which areas will be in the shade. I will usually pretend that my paper has a sun in the upper right corner. It's sort of my default setting. And because of this, I know that I'll be needing more dots closer together in the areas that are either to the left side or the bottom. I'll be keeping the top sections and the areas to the right of my paper much lighter. And I'm trying my best to keep my hand out of the way, but it can be challenging to work close enough to see what I'm doing while staying out of the shot. So sorry if I get in the way here. I know that I'll need the most dots along the bottom, so I'm going to speed this part up a bit. You might find that a larger tip is easier so you don't have to make as many dots, but I found that I can do a lot more with the smaller tip as far as varying my values. And for the ground and the grass, what I like to do is sort of a cross between stippling and dragging. It creates some broken lines and uneven textures that I think have a really cool organic look to them. I would normally take a little extra care with the placements of my dots and I'd turn on some music or an audiobook and take my time, but I don't think you want to be here all day. I'm going over a few of the darkest areas one more time, and then I think we'll probably call it good enough. And see how I'm working on accentuating the curves and the bumps of the bush by continuing just beyond the existing lines with a little row of dots. I'm also adding just a sprinkle of dots throughout. 
This is an easy way to give your object a little bit more shape and dimension. Okay, so number two is pen lines plus stippling. For the third and final exercise, we begin the same way, but using pencil instead for the first step. Now grab your pen of choice. When I work my way around this time, I'm using mainly stippling, but I occasionally like to use that dragging method that we did earlier. So it's like I'm stippling, but barely bothering to lift my pen in some spots. And just like before, the bottom left areas will be more concentrated and the top right areas will be lighter. I'm going to skip ahead some since we've already done this part once. And once again, I'll be using sort of that dragging method for the ground and the grass. And I really do like that look of the broken lines. Seems to add a lot of texture that I wouldn't have if I had just used a continuous flat line. All right, now let's grab our eraser and see what we're left with. All right, you can see that we have a much softer look around the edges. And at this time, I can take a look and see if there are any more areas where I need a little bit more shading. And as we take a look at our finished piece here, keep in mind, this is not meant to be a masterpiece. I don't know about you, but I've never been great at going from beginner to master. So this is simply a stepping stone, one way to work on improving your beginning drawings and doodles. Number three, pencil first, followed by pen stippling. So let's take a look and compare the three different methods. And here's another example. This is one that I had a lot of fun just putting a ton of shape into, and I think it looks kind of like a pile of popcorn. As you go back to your own doodles, consider the shapes that you can add more dimension to, and think of the ways you can play with multiple values, and then give it a try. You might surprise yourself. And if you're interested in putting your new skills to the test with a full page drawing, and you like all things creepy and cute, then I hope you'll join me in my next video where I'll be walking you through how to draw this goofy little monster. Thanks for watching.